Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah, and I am 32 years old. My sister and I have always had a distant relationship, primarily due to the significant age gap between us. Our parents, too, treated us differently from the very beginning. Before my sister was born, our family faced a challenging period when my dad lost his job. Forced to rent out our house and move into a smaller place, we had to make numerous adjustments with limited resources. Despite my dad's efforts to find employment, it became increasingly difficult. Both my parents began submitting job applications, and eventually, my mom received a call from an old contact offering her a position in a new venture. The pay wasn't substantial, but it was an improvement from our previous situation. Six months later, my dad was finally hired. While we were doing better, we still had debts to settle. Three months after he lost his job, we had rented out our house, realizing it would take time for things to return to normal. We continued renting, and a year later, my mom was pregnant, prompting us to move into a slightly larger apartment. Despite the improved circumstances, my parents remained cautious with money. Throughout this time, my communication with my parents was limited to brief greetings and goodbyes. Their preoccupation with financial worries dominated our conversations. When we first moved, I eagerly awaited their return each day, but both were exhausted and barely acknowledged me. Despite my efforts to be independent and help out, they seemed oblivious. After our second move, all attention shifted to my pregnant mom. I tried to express my feelings, but she was easily irritated and dismissed my attempts at conversation. My dad, working long hours, would arrive home later than my mom and often ignored me. I felt like a stranger in my own home, crying myself to sleep while they remained indifferent. Three months after my dad lost his job, I was transferred to a public school and never returned to my previous one. The loneliness at home, combined with the lack of friends at my new school, intensified my desire to reconnect with my old life. As my mom's pregnancy progressed, they seemed to forget my existence entirely. I felt sad and hurt, unable to address the situation. In the final trimester of my mom's pregnancy, with the impending birth just days away, I found myself alone at home while she was at the hospital. Despite my solitude, I refrained from complaining, only wishing for her well-being and the chance to meet the new addition to our family. Upon their return, the baby took center stage, leaving me feeling ignored and isolated. When I asked to see the baby, my mom became agitated, instructing me to leave, while my dad remained silent. I never had the chance to spend quality time with my sister, or even hold her. My mom was extremely protective, and although my dad tried a few times to let me be near her, my mom always intervened. It felt as though she harbored a deep resentment towards me, and I couldn't understand why. A few months after my mom's recovery, my parents decided to move back into the house we owned. I held on to a glimmer of hope that returning home would bring a return to normalcy. However, as time passed, their attitude toward me worsened. One day, I had a breakdown in front of them, accidentally waking up my sister in the process, which led to anger from all of them. I found myself locked in my room, crying myself to sleep. I soon realized that even though we now owned a house, it wasn't spacious. With only two bedrooms, they placed me in the attic to make room for my sister. Cleaning the attic became my responsibility, and it was a horrible, cold, and dark place without any wiring, so there was no possibility of light. I often went up there when my parents had gone to bed, only to sneak back down and sleep on the couch. They caught me a few times, but didn't seem to care as long as I stayed out of their way. As I grew older, I got a job they were unaware of. When I received my first paycheck, I initially wanted to buy them something in hopes of gaining their approval. However, I talked myself out of it, collecting the money, without spending it on myself either. Eventually, it was time for university. Although I had saved some money, it wasn't enough to cover the fees, food, and living costs. When I brought up the idea of university, they outright declined, claiming they didn't have much. Their focus remained on my sister, and I didn't hold it against her. We never talked much growing up, and any attempt to bond resulted in unnecessary drama, so it seemed better for both of us to keep our distance. My only chance of going to university was securing a full scholarship. I applied for numerous scholarships using a neighbor's laptop and, fortunately, 
I managed to get into a good university. Although I couldn't secure a full scholarship, I still needed to cover my living and food expenses. Determined to make it work, I reached out to a kind cafe owner for a job. She was an older lady, sweet and experienced, having been at the cafe for quite some time. Upon moving, I realized my parents were indifferent to my absence. They wouldn't have noticed if I hadn't informed them. The challenge of finding affordable housing seemed daunting given the high costs and required down payments. Seeking refuge, I approached the cafe owner, explaining my situation. She empathized with my predicament and offered me a room upstairs, deducting the cost from my paycheck. Grateful for a roof over my head, I took on additional jobs in my free time. The cafe owner, expressing genuine concern for me, surprised me with her kindness. Slowly, I settled into my new life, successfully navigating university and securing a position through internships. With the prospect of a stable job, I purchased professional clothes for the first time, realizing my worn-out hoodie wouldn't suit the image I needed. The first person I shared my success with was the cafe owner, who had been a pillar of support when I needed it most. She rejoiced with me, hugging and expressing pride in my accomplishments. I felt a deep connection with her. She had become like family, and I genuinely loved her. After graduating, I needed to find a place closer to my job, and the cafe owner accompanied me to help with the decision. Here's the rewritten version with punctuation and adjustments for clarity. The first person I shared my success with was the kind cafe owner, who had been a pillar of support when I needed it most. She rejoiced with me, hugging and expressing pride in my accomplishments. I felt a deep connection with her. She had become like family, and I genuinely loved her. After graduating, I needed to find a place closer to my job, and the cafe owner accompanied me to help make the decision. Even after settling in, I maintained a close relationship with her, visiting once or twice a month and keeping in regular contact. Despite my efforts, my attempts to reach out to my parents were met with silence. They never answer my calls, and when my sister occasionally picked up, the conversations felt awkward. During my time at work, I made friends who, despite my introverted nature, made an effort to include me. They invited me to outings, and though I usually declined, their persistence occasionally convinced me to join in. About a year later, the company generously distributed free tickets for a mini vacation. Though I had never used my vacation days before, I decided to seize the opportunity and bring along the only family I knew, the kind cafe owner, whom I affectionately called Auntie. She wasn't old enough to be my grandmother, and I insisted on her being my travel companion. My friends at the company were intrigued and excited to meet her. Interestingly, Annie turned out to be an extrovert and quickly became friends with my colleagues. During the trip, a guy approached us, and Andy, in her exuberance, encouraged me to spend time with him. To my surprise, that encounter led to a deeper connection, and he eventually became my husband. He lived conveniently close to where I worked. Upon returning from the vacation, my now-husband called me and asked me out. We dated for two months, were in a relationship for three years, and have now been happily married for four years. Despite the joyous occasion, my past with my family loomed in the background. When I invited my parents and sister to my wedding, they were no-shows. My then-fiancé was aware of the situation and was understandably upset, even contemplating not inviting them. A year or two later, my sister got married, and I was not on the guest list. I saw pictures online and congratulated her, understanding that her lavish wedding was likely funded by our parents. It didn't bother me. I had moved on and found happiness in my life. During this time, I was pregnant with our first child, and my husband, along with his supportive parents, became my new family. Annie also visited frequently, and sometimes our home hosted gatherings with all our loved ones. One day during my pregnancy, Auntie received a letter in my name. I was surprised to find it was from my parents. I thought they might have heard about my pregnancy and wanted to reach out. I had informed them of my university address years ago, but my contact information had since changed. At five months pregnant, I spoke to my husband about it, and he was understandably hesitant, given the sudden reappearance of my estranged parents after years of silence. Concerned about potential inappropriate content in the letter, 
My husband asked if he could read it first. He was always careful around me, especially since I was pregnant. When Auntie brought the letter two or three days later, my husband's expression turned to disgust as he read its contents. He chose not to share the details with me, advising against reading it, and simply comforted me with hugs and empathy. Eventually, I decided to face reality and asked Annie to read the letter aloud. To my dismay, my parents had lost their house, which had apparently been mortgaged for my sister's extravagant wedding with her now-divorced husband. My parents had invested their money in it too, and now they were asking me to pay back the money they claimed I owed them for the years they took care of me. My sister's ex-husband refused to pay the mortgage, and she couldn't afford it either. Sitting there with a blank face, my husband's comforting arms around me, I felt pure disappointment. That night, I went to sleep crying, feeling guilty for letting my baby be affected by my selfish parents. However, I decided not to let them disrupt my happiness. I sought legal advice, and my lawyer sent them a warning about potential harassment charges if they continued to contact me. Another letter addressed their claim of child neglect, emphasizing that I owed them nothing, from the clothes I wore to the food I ate to the house I owned. I made it clear that my success, marriage, and the life I had built were a result of my own and my husband's hard work and efforts. Before all this unfolded, I had worked diligently to put myself through school and college. I secured a job and earned promotions through my hard work and dedication. Throughout these milestones, my parents were absent. They neither supported nor contributed financially. The meager scraps I turned into sandwiches and the leftovers I barely ate from their table did not constitute genuine care or support. In response to their claim that I owed them for the years they supposedly took care of me, I asserted that they had contacted the wrong child. The true architect of their financial predicament was their dear daughter, who had mortgaged the house they had put in her name. I made it clear that they had dug their own hole and should climb out of it by themselves. An update two months later brings me close to my delivery date. As far as I know, my parents have not attempted to contact me again. My sister, it seems, gave the house to the bank, and I'm unsure if they owe any more debts. They appear to be back to where they started, and with this update, I consider this chapter of my life concluded.